Hello, my name is Ken Schaefer and I'm President and Lead Program Architect for Innoventive Software, makers of Frameforge Previs Studio and the RealD Professional Stereo Calculator for iPhone and iPad. In this video session, I'll be talking about the Stereo Calculator's Screen Settings page, its various options, and how the values you enter and the settings you choose in these options will affect the app's stereo calculations. So, let's get right to it. The calculator can work either in meters or feet, so you can set it to the units you generally use or the ones that the specific shoot you're on is using. You switch between the units simply by clicking this control, and you'll see all the values automatically change to reflect the selected units. For now, I'll just set it back to feet, because that's the units I predominantly use. Once you have your unit set, the very next thing you need to do is to set up your screen width. This value should be the largest screen width that you expect the finished project will ever be displayed on. The reason we need to do this, of course, is to avoid divergence, which is when the viewer's eyes would have to turn outward from parallel. Divergence is a very bad thing because it can give your viewers headaches and nausea and all kinds of things we want to avoid. To change the screen width value, all you have to do is tap on the screen width entry field and then enter the value you want using the numeric keypad that appears. Obviously, you would enter whatever value your project needs, but we'll stick with 42 feet for this video session. That's equal to about 13 meters, and that's a typically large cinema screen. Next, we'll set our max positive on-screen offset, which tells the program how large the positive parallax can get before it should be considered divergence. We'll leave it at 2.5 inches, which is equal to about 6.5 centimeters, as that's the average distance between most adults' eyes. If you're targeting a kid audience or a television screen, you might want to go smaller. However, that's really up to you as a creative decision based on what you feel is appropriate for your target audience and their viewing conditions. You should note, of course, that you can enter this max positive offset as either a fixed distance, such as 2.5 inches, or you can enter it as a percentage of screen width, at which point the program will calculate the fixed distance for you. Underneath the max positive offset are two additional entry fields, closest allowable viewer and max divergence per eye. These are optional features which you may or may not want to use based on your own personal philosophies about what makes good stereo. The theory behind it is based on the fact that the farther away a viewer is from the screen, then the smaller the angle will be for any given divergence. Many stereographers believe that as long as the viewer is sufficiently distant from the screen, a small bit of divergence, typically up to a third of a degree per eye, can be allowed as the actual angle of divergence will be made negligible by the distance. The way the calculator implements this is very straightforward. You simply enter the closest distance you ever expect a viewer to be seated, and the maximum angle of divergence in degrees per eye, which you deem as being acceptable. The app then calculates how much additional on-screen offset that will give you based on the other values, and it adds it to your base max positive on-screen offset and shows you the results in this box to the right. As you change the settings in these two values, you will see the total offset change correspondingly. And of course, if you don't want to make use of this feature, then simply set either of these two values to zero, and the calculator will ignore them. If you ever have questions about how to use this app, then context-sensitive help is always available right at your fingertips. Simply tap the Hint button, which is found on virtually all of the calculator screens, and then tap the Control or Field that you want more information about. As you can see, the help typically describes not only what the field or control does, but when you might want to use it and considerations to be aware of. If you want help on several controls or fields, simply double tap the Hint button and it will stay locked on, and you can get help for as many on-screen items as you desire. When you're done, tap it again to return the app to its normal functioning. 